Shall we begin? Let's begin now. What up, what up, everybody? It is your boy BQ, and this is the BQ Speaks podcast here at the Impact Lounge. If you're a first timer, this is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. So make sure to hit that subscribe button for lots of good content going forward. And if you enjoy this podcast, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Would also love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So today's topic, this is something that's been coming a lot, coming up a lot over the years, but especially lately. For as long as I can remember, Impact Wrestling fans have been asking for a second show. Now, more than ever with the whole TNA thing with Moose on television with the belt, now people want a second show, but they want it to be TNA themed. So that's what I'm going to get into today. Will TNA become a second show? Now, I want to talk about what that would look like. We're going to kind of get into the pros and cons or, or what would need to happen to make that successful. Right now, they do have a second show, and it's called Explosion. <laughs> if you look at, uh, frankly, Explo- Explosion is a joke. It's a bit of a joke. We all know that. If you look at the success of AEW Dark, NWA Power, you look at those shows and you say, damn, Impact could do that. They could do that with Explosion. And I feel like they were a little bit behind the curve on that. I know MLW does their thing on YouTube. I'm not a, I'm not really an MLW fan, so I don't know how bad or good that show does. But this was something Impact had the opp- opportunity to jump out, how to jump out ahead of the curve. And it seems like a lot of times they're playing catch up instead of jumping out ahead. So, but for me, the only way that a TNA themed show works is if it's a web show. If it's a show that comes out once a week, I would put it out on Thursdays because I think I think that's the only night of the week where something doesn't come out. I'm not exactly sure. You can correct me on that. But um, you can make a lot of arguments why this could work and, and why it couldn't work at the same time. But this is now let me let me say this first of all. I know that whatever I say here, it doesn't matter if it's opinion, fact. There's a lot of you that's gonna say, no, it, it needs to be a TNA show or it needs a brand back to TNA. I realize whatever I say, you know, some of you are gonna think what you want to think, and that's fine. That's that's the beauty of having an opinion. But this is why I think a second television a television show wouldn't work. And this is going to kind of highlight in general why I wouldn't change the Impact brand back over to TNA. So that's the other thing people are starting to call for online. Let's go back to TNA. If you look at the interest in Explosion, as I just mentioned, or the monthly specials on Impact Plus and Twitch, for the most part, the interest in these shows are non-existent. Now, there have been improvements in the monthly specials. Explosion's been the same show and Explosion stinks. Explosion is what it is. It was something done for the UK market and now we get on Impact Plus but it's not good. I thought when Gabby took over the interviews it they, they were done a lot better because there's only so many questions Josh can, Josh can ask, ask someone. It's always the same questions. A lot of times it's the same people. You know, so when they brought her on, it was something different and fresh. And she was real good, real talented um, at what she does. But with the monthly specials, there has been an improvement. And I, no one's been a bigger critic of those than I have. I have, But the numbers are still minuscule when you're talking about the genuine interest. Because Impact waited too long. Or I don't know if they waited, but they didn't move quick enough in making these shows matter, making them mean something. And in that case, how different is that than the one night onlys? Which those shows stunk. I watched them every month, but they, those were horrendous. But there wasn't a big difference because they didn't mean anything. And then the, the monthly shows they did didn't mean anything either. So 
you could say, well, Impact has a history of trying to do some kind of second show or secondary programming, and it hasn't gone well. Now, obviously, this would be that's something TNA branded would be would be a little different. Now, for a while, I'm gonna kind of jump and back jump back and forth here a little bit with the TNA second show and rebranding the TNA. But for a while, the Impact branding was really, really murky. People didn't know if it was TNA or if it was Impact Wrestling. And there was an uh, interview, I, I watched it online with Al Snow, and you know they actually asked, is it TNA or is it Impact? He said, I don't know. So you, you got to think some of the people behind the scenes didn't really even, didn't make that distinction. And I thought that TNA you know, several years ago, did a pretty poor job with making that distinction as well. You know, we knew it was TNA, but branding should be crisp and clear. I think that the current Impact regime would struggle to, if you were to change a brand back over to TNA, I think they would struggle to clearly deliver the branding for it. If you were to bring those two names back in the mix, I think that would muddy things up again. Because you're talking about one show being named TNA, which is the old name of the company, and one show being called Impact, which is the new name of the company. So for me, that's really weird. Obviously, they could change names around, do you know, do different things, but that that makes it a little difficult for me. For both shows to work, though, if they're gonna say, okay, we want to do a second TNA branded show. In order for it to work, both of the shows would have to be on equal footing. Each roster, each title, they have to be just as important as the other. There can't be an A and B show. Because if you if you don't do that, if you don't put them on equal footing, footing you're either devaluing the history of TNA or you're devaluing the future of impact in the last three years that they've been trying to build, which they're saying is the new direction, the new positive direction. So you're now devaluing one of the two. If you put them up, you know, as separate shows, you're devaluing the impact brand. That's been trying to get rid of the TNA stink only to ultimate say, Oh, well, TNA has been better all along. So it's, it's, it's tricky. It's really, really tricky. It would require bringing in a lot of new talent. Uh, if you guys remember when ECW relaunched years ago, at first it was pretty good. I mean, I, I always enjoy that brand, to be honest with you. You know, when they brought it back, it was really watered down. I still liked it. But at first, before Vince got his hands on it, it still had a bit of ECW because it brought back, you know, some of the ECW guys. And then it, you know, some of what's old, some of what's new. And they, they mixed it together to make it work. So obviously, you're not going to bring back these main eventers of the past. You can bring in a few dudes, you know, and mix them in with the current product, change the ropes, the ring. But you'd have to bring in, and and um, I'm going to keep saying this for a little while because I'm I'm going to hold Impact accountable when they kicked off Rebellion, talking about we're going all in with the video package. That's going to be my theme with my podcast going forward is holding impact accountable as a fan, as a podcaster, YouTuber and say, okay, you said you're going to go all in, go all in. So to go all in, in this kind of concept, it require bringing in talent, new announcers, new commentators, because if you blur the lines between the two, you're just getting the same product. You're just getting a different version of impact. And you're getting something that's nothing like the previous TNA. Much like the ECW became nothing like ECW. If Josh Matthews calls both shows, then how are they different? Impact has stretched things backstage very thin for a while. People have worn multiple hats. And that's why they've been able to sustain, but haven't been able to grow the way they would like to grow. If you see, you see stars like Aiden Prince, Alexi Nicole, and they do really good quality work when Impact calls their name. 
but they won't even sign him to per appearance deals. So, you know, based off that kind of information, do we really expect them to bring in all the necessary parts and spend the necessary dollars to make this work? I don't, I don't think so. I can't see that happening. They'd have to present the shows much like if you watch Arrow, Flash, Supergirl Legends of Tomorrow, they would have to develop, they would have to present the shows much like that where they're their own entities, but they can come together for a common purpose for super shows. But it's professional wrestling, so that probably wouldn't happen. They would probably pit the shows against each other, which isn't creative and it isn't different. Impact needs to be different, not just good. Do I think they're good? Do I think the product they've been putting on for a while is good? Yeah, I'm, I'm their number one critic. You know, I complain a lot about what they do. It's only because I care and because I have a passion for what they do and because I see the holes and I see where they can be better and I know they can be better. You're never going to hear me get on here and be like, oh, they need to spend more money. They need to do this. And you know, I'm not, who am I to say that? But when it's, you know, I brought up last night on my streaming podcast, Review and Impact, which the stream was a little rough, but as I said, continue to work with me. I brought up an episode of AEW from a couple weeks ago that I said was perfect. So when I say that, it's because there were things that I can see Impact do, but they don't. So there, there's a difference between throwing you know, money and, and, and being creative. So Impact needs to not just be good, they need to be. They need to deliver something different, and um, I feel there's some or- corners that they cut right now with the with the presentation of their product. The wrestling is always good. The wrestlers always work hard. But ultimately, kind of going back to the topic, the confusion with the branding is why I don't think this idea could work. I'm not a fan of going back to the TNA name either, because. And many of you share these sentiments. To go back to TNA's living in the past. Which is something they already do. And that's why they, they're kind of moving at a snail's pace as far as growth within the United States. Now we're seeing better houses and everything. But in the United States, it's been a a slow growth. Because of the inability to really think outside the box. And the reliance on the old stuff so to change the name to tna would undo everything that impact has been doing over the last few years and it puts a message out that the current product is inferior and it's not you know there's good things about the old tna days but they're not going to get back to that that's just not going to happen if we're being realistic But the Impact product as a whole over the last three years has been better than many years of TNA. Right now we're getting the wrestling kind of back to where it used to be. Uh, Just right now we're kind of lacking a lot of the the star power and everything. Even though we've got some good stars on there. But I do think right now it's the best it's been in a long time. So I think you go forward. Just because the loyal fans wanted to go back to TNA... That doesn't mean that's good business. As a matter of fact, I think it's horrible business to do that. Going back to TNA is not going to bring people back. If you need proof, look at the weekly flashbacks and the YouTube content where they continue to AJ Styles this, AJ Styles that. And piggyback off you know, what other companies are doing when, it, when it's connected to their originals or their wrestlers of old. Look at all that and tell me. Is that bringing people back to the product? It's not. I'm sorry to say it. Trying to use the history of TNA to bring people to Impact Wrestling isn't going to work. And it's actually a horrible marketing strategy. The growth of Impact is not going to come from TNA's history. It's going to come from a commitment to the brand they've been creating out over the last several years. Now, I want you guys to listen to this. Seriously listen to it. Do you know that there is now an entire generation that's never experienced the downfall of TNA? There are kids in their 20s right now 
that don't know about the Hogan and the Bischoff. Maybe, maybe they have some memories of Dixie. They don't have memories of the shit show that TNA became. When you constantly rely on nostalgia, whether it's TNA, ECW, you're speaking to an audience that remembers all those things, that remembers the dark days of TNA and remembers when things were not so good, when guys weren't getting paid, the LOL TNA. They remember all these things and this is who you're trying to appeal to. They're becoming that guy who keeps asking the same girl out over and over and over. And they and she keeps telling him no. That's desperation. That's not creativity. That's not thinking outside the box. It comes off as desperation. If you want a bigger audience, you find that target demographic and uh, listen to this again, okay? You find that target demographic who are old enough to love wrestling but young enough to not remember the days of the dark days of TNA. Old enough to love wrestling, take themselves to a wrestling show, pay for their own ticket, pay for their own merch, and young enough not to remember remember the bad. That's your target. I'm a big, I'm a giant, huge LA Clippers fan, okay? When I was growing up as a kid, we had games where 4,000 people showed up because no one gave a ish about the Clippers because the Lakers were in town and they were winning championships. And it was like this for a long time. And it's, you know, it's still Lakers town. But the but the Clippers never said, oh man, we're, we're here up here with the Lakers. They're not like, we're an alternative to the Lakers. What they did was they said, okay, we have to build our own audience. Um, what where the Lakers are very Hollywood, they, they've been, the Clippers have been marketing to a, the hard workers, the blue collar workers. But even more so than that, I'm going to tie it into what I said about TNA a second ago, the de- dark days of TNA. There is a period of time about, in re- recent years, um, seven, eight years where the Clippers were good and the Lakers were bad. You know, you can look at right now the years WWE has been bad and throw, throw impact into that. The Lakers were bad. The Clippers were good. So they don't, weren't winning championships, but they were good. So they started marketing the, the, the brand of the team to a fan who doesn't remember the Lakers being good doesn't remember them winning championships. They just remember seeing them get blown out every year and not make the playoffs while the clips were. And those and that young fan now grows with the team and the brand is going to get bigger and bigger as the years come. They're never going to be able to compete, but they've identified their target fan. And it doesn't matter what you do if you're a YouTuber if you um, small business owner, wrestling, sports, the number one thing you have to do is find your target fan. How did I build the Impact Lounge? I didn't just build it for Impact Wrestling fans. I built it for Impact Wrestling fans who needed a home, who needed a, a podcaster who was going to not shoot down everything that TNA did because there was once upon a time I was a lot more positive than I am now now it's because I expect more of them but there was a time where I I delivered a very positive show was still honest but a very positive show more so than I do now and um, I, I appeal to those people who were like man TNA can't catch a break with any of these podcasters who's when is someone gonna give them a fair shot you know, so that's what I was able to build the Impact Lounge. So you have to know who your target audience is. Impact doesn't have that. You know what? Lucha Underground had a bigger buzz despite a third of the audience of Impact was because they were different. So becoming TNA again is simply appeasing the people 
who already watch the product. And that's not what's going to bring back viewers. You can't just appease the people whoever whoever watch it. We're going to watch it no matter what. They have an opportunity though. So, you know, in closing, do I think they have to go back to TNA? No, I wouldn't. Should they have a second show TNA? No, because I don't think they could execute it. But they have an opportunity right now to do something very, very special with Moose as the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And you got to strike when the iron is hot because this now, more than ever, this is the chance to do this. EC3, Mike Bennett, Rockstar Spud, Eric Young. You've got free agents who are attached to the TNA brand. So no, they don't need to do a second TNA show, but they can do something creative and amazing and buzzworthy, but they can use the TNA brand to do it. They can use the TNA belt to do it, the name of TNA, the history. You you can do something creative with the current roster the current product but use that tna name and that's what i think they should do not i I wouldn't go overboard and and make any major changes because in my heart i really feel that doubling down on impact wrestling and going all in on impact wrestling is what and not half-assing it is going to get them where they want to be i i could tell i in my gut i think that impact management and the creative and everyone who just works behind the scenes. If they could go back and take that TNA show they did a couple weeks ago. If they could go back and deliver a better show. I think they'd do so in a heartbeat. Of course we're not going to get all these main eventers show up and everything. But when you do a video package about the X Division. Then we don't get an X Division match. You do a video package about what you did for women's wrestling, and we don't get a knockouts match. And we get a weak main event. And we get a couple squash matches and, and a comedy match with Johnny Swinger, where the only the coolest parts of the show were Manic and Suicide teaming up, which didn't even make sense. But that was the coolest part of the show, and it, it was more, more of a comedy thing. And then you got Kid Cash on one side, who he just got squashed the week before on Impact, so why do you care? You know? I really think if Impact could go back, fuck man, we could have, because remember that that they were Access and Anthem and everything, they were really happy with the viewership of the TNA show. If they could go back and say, man, I wish we would have knocked this show out of the ballpark and really went in and given it 100% instead of just basically putting a Twitch show on television, you know, because that's really what it was. When you try to create viral content, I know this is a content creator, it's not going to go viral. But when you least expect it, something's going to take off. Something's going to hit. And, you know, that's why the Broken Universe took off and why the Undead Realm didn't was because they tried to say, okay, we're going to, well, we're going to redo what was going on before. And it didn't catch on like that. And uh, I'm going to close with a story here that when I kicked off the impact lounge and i decided okay i'm gonna be uh you know i had an impact i had the youtube channel and i was podcasting but when i decided okay i kind of want to go the route of being a youtuber you know i was doing little vlogs but when i sat down i'm like okay here's my first big vlog that i'm gonna do i covered johnny john hennigan and taya and drago because this was back when um impact was just getting ready to hit the road again finally after years I did. I talked about those three coming, and then the the, the rumor of Rey Mysterio. I didn't prepare for this upload. It wasn't good quality. The graphic was okay that I did, but for the most part, I just uploaded something. That something ended up having thirteen thousand views that week, and to this day, it's still one of my higher viewed videos on the channel. You know, it's in it's in the top four, top five. And if I could go back, back, man, I wish I was prepared and, and went all in and didn't just, you know, half-ass that upload. Who knows? You know, because I think I might have had like six or 700 subscribers at the time. That video had people pouring in and I was able to eclipse a thousand and really actually launch what this channel was. You know, that video made this channel. 
like who knows how quick quickly it would have grown otherwise so um it was a major missed opportunity but i didn't know any better so i think that if impact could go back they would have said man we we would have killed this tna show because now you can't go back and redo it but you can do something very creative going forward with moose and hopefully trying to bring some names back and do you know makes make it matter and do something compelling and different thanks for checking out bq speaks please consider subscribing give a thumbs up and if you're listening on a streaming platform thank you for being here and i'm out peace